Hey everybody, welcome back to Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. My name is John, and we're going to go over some recent actions that I've had to wait a few days for to talk about. As a member of ITC or as a TO, uh, we have our own way of communicating with uh, other TOs and the heads of ITC, which is Independent Tournament Circuit, which is a pretty much a worldwide organization that handles uh, the scoring and some creating all the rules and regulations to have a unified game system that can culminate into the big uh, prizes and awards and everything at the end of the season, which is in January. Now, not everybody follows it, and you certainly don't have to. And they don't tell you, hey, you've got to meet all these um, outrageous standards to, to run your event. It's your event, run it your way. But for scoring purposes and to be considered a certain type of event, you have to meet their minimum requirements. So real quick example, a casual weekend tournament that most stores will have once per month is called an RTT. Uh, it used to be like the Rogue Trader Tournament on or from Games Workshop way back in the day when they were actually actively involved in tournaments. And then we have, and I think that's eight players minimum. Then from there, we have the Grand Tournament, which is a minimum of 28 players, to the Major, which is 58. And then I believe there's now the Super Major, which is like 225 or 250 plus. Uh, examples of a Super Major would be the Nova Open, I believe Adepticon, and of course the Las Vegas Open. I think the Las Vegas Open, uh, the last couple times was around 800 players, all vying for the top spots at the end of the season, which end of the season is January of, uh, well, every January. So what happens at these events, you go participate and play uh, in a number of games with some requirements that, uh, that are, uh, what armies are allowed, what models are allowed, how many points, how many rounds you play. And at the end of the event, you have your score submitted and you earn points in ITC overall. And at the end of the season, depending on your positioning, uh, you could win awards, um, recognition, uh, money, uh, all other sorts of prizes. And for some people, that have these coaching businesses for playing uh, tabletop miniature games with plastic toy soldiers, and they make hundreds of dollars or more off of this. Uh, that's a big selling point when you have a top player who ha somehow gains celebrity status, and I'm gonna go into some celebrity status stuff here in a moment, and oh my gosh, this guy's over here giving a coaching service, and he's won a couple majors and he top, placed top five, top six in, uh, at the LVO or the Las Vegas Open. So he must be 100% the best player, one of the best players. So in a, in a game that uses random chance to determine a, a victor, uh, I'm, I'm being a little snarky here, but that's really the core value. Once you break everything down, they're playing a dice game and they're doing coaching services and making money, you know, and I'm not downplaying that. I, I respect the hustle. I respect the grift. Uh, it, it, you got to make your money somehow. And one income is not enough. You should always have a second source of income. And if you can get people to pay you to coach them, cool. Make your money. I'm going to go more into that in just a moment. However, Recently at the Fabricator Forge GT, which I believe this was their first year, or maybe it's been going on for a while. Normally, from what I understand, they've never had a problem with any of their events before. Everything looked great. They had awesome cameras, uh, awesome uh, uh, setups with terrain, all their tables. Everything was good until a player was caught cheating after or after... Uh, the video reviews of some of the some of his games on the top table, and this is starting to become a little bit more frequent. We're I, I think we're gonna hit a couple more bad players cheating, 
and then it'll dip down. We'll get into all that in a moment. I'm going to try not to go too long into this video. At any rate, so this player, uh, the judges, the, the tournament organizer, the event organizer, the players got together, hashed it all out, looked at the very good quality video over on Twitch. I'm going to have that link down in the description. And uh, over on Reddit, there's a couple other links. I'll put that in the description as well so you can go back, read what was reviewed, watch the videos yourself, and make your own determination. However, after careful consideration, based on the physical evidence, based on the physical evidence, and the testimonies of the victim. I, I use that term lightly, but they were victims. The player TJ, and I can't pronounce his last name. I, well, I can. I can try to butcher it. I don't want to. I'm just going to say TJ uh, was penalized. And he received a penalty. Basically, everything at that event was thrown out the window for him. And then locally... The, the regional area is dealing with it. And then on a much larger scale for ITC, it, is being, it has been now dealt with. Now, as a member of the ITC TOs or tournament organizers, we were privy, a lot of us were already privy to it. And a lot of people already knew about it from Reddit. We have not been able to talk about it, at least those of us with integrity to follow our own rules of not going out and telling people about it. Uh, we, we had to wait until Friday when the organizers said, hey, here's our official statement. So I've waited a couple days to see if anything else came of, of this, if they had to do an update or an adjustment. So I'm not going to read this whole thing. I will uh, at least summarize, and then I'll, I'll pass on what Reese had said. He is the, the owner, operator, head honcho for ITC. So after the, the condensed version from ITC and administration says um, at the end of the day that this individual TJ uh, will receive no score for any events they play in for the rest of the 2021 season. Now that's for the what he's done so far and for the rest of the season. That means he is zeroed out and this has been a very top player and this means that he's, there's probably going to be a lot of scrutinization on him and some other stuff I'll mention in just a moment. But that means anything that he was going to possibly win at the end of the season, and he is supposedly a quality player, is gone. Now, what else is gone is he violated his integrity. He violated his reputation. So going forward, if he does participate in any events, because he can't participate, he just can't get points for it. So I doubt he's going to be doing anything else the rest of the season. But you never know. At any rate, there goes his integrity. There goes his reputation. And also the coaching organization that essentially was employing him to coach from what I understand. Now, I, I have not found literally anything. Uh, I can't. Maybe it's already been scrubbed. I can't find what, what group he was attached to. And I, have, I can speculate, but uh, without... Uh, proof I can't give it to you but any team that he was on which he was more likely a team and the organization that he was working with as a coach now their reputation is in uh, in trouble they're they're going to be scrutinized more there's going to be questions about how how long have they known he was like this has there ever been this before and if so why didn't they do anything about him before? Why didn't they cut him loose? Maybe they did. Maybe they gave him warnings and he gave him the middle finger. I mean, he essentially pissed away his, pissed away everything. Excuse my language, but pissed away everything over a game of plastic toy soldiers. It's really shameful. Now, before I go any further, I... And neither should any of you hold his team or whatever business responsible for his actions. He, at the end of the day, made the choice to do this, to violate the rules that Warhammer 40,000 have laid down from Games Workshop and the ITC Code of Conduct for the players. He 
decided, made that choice to violate all that. That is now on him. That has nothing to do as of this moment with his team, his organization that he was attached to, or even his place of business, which I'm saying don't reach out, don't um, go after this guy online, don't do anything, just leave it alone because the punishment has been meted out. Justice has been served. So remember that. Uh, but remember, it's not worth it at the end of the day. So let me read what Reese says. On a personal note, and I'm reading this out loud because we do have people that are traveling and they like to listen to the YouTube while they're traveling. So I want to read this out to you. So on a personal note, Reese says, please remember that while we love these games, they are just games. They're not worth damaging your reputation or compor compromising your ethics, nor of harming the reputation of the hardworking event organizers whose event you are attending. Likewise, no one has the right to diminish the experience of the other attendees coming to an event that paid money and often took time off work to attend. So be mindful of the other individuals involved in making this awesome and vibrant community of gamers what it is. Winning games is fun, but being an upstanding human is better. Now the flip side of this coin is that, again, these are just games we play. Regardless of how much we are passionately enthused about them, we are all human and we all make mistakes. Do not let the group mentality drive you to say or do things to someone that could do real harm to their real life. That is neither a fair nor appropriate response to what occurs in a game like 40k. Further, we all deserve a chance to redeem ourselves and be forgiven. So please bear in mind when choosing how you conduct yourself regarding these types of incidents in online communities or at events. Reese. That was April 16th. And that's what I was going into. Don't hold anybody accountable for what happened but that individual. But do not harass them. Just like if a criminal is tried and convicted and meted out their punishment, once that punishment has been meted out, justice has been served. You don't need to keep going after them. This individual has been punished. And it's a severe punish, especially for somebody as passionate and as involved into the community as TJ is. So... For those of you that are not big on the tournaments or you look at tournaments as a toxic cesspool, this is a tiny percentage of the minority of the game, tabletop gaming community. I hate to say it, tournament players, and you don't like to hear it, but you are this. You're the minority. The mi majority, which I uh, don't even know how much bigger I can get, I would say you guys are like 25%, but you're the vocal 25% of the hobby, the gaming community. And when you have a bad apple, that tiny percentage, that tiny, tiny percentage that are cheaters, that are the toxic players, I hate that terminology, but there's one that just gives a black eye to everybody else that, does, that, that doesn't do anything bad, that you're, you're a great gamer, but you have these bad actors that jeopardize the reputation of the community. And now TJ has been punished, as I said, and good. As far as I'm concerned, that it's over and done with, and it should be for everybody else. But it also should be a signal to all the bad apples out there, not just the cheaters. All of you that are misbehaving and essentially violating that code of conduct, you're now on notice, and I'm going to tell you why. After that code of conduct was created about a year, year and a half ago, it's taken us a while, but all the TOs are now, we have regional, or regional, basically regional managers, if you will. And then we have the assistance to the regional manager. That's all the TOs. And we're all communicating now. We're passing on, hey, here's our red cards. Here's our guys that are banned. Here's the guys that uh, are um, the bad seeds, the bad apples at our events. 
And that's a good thing. We need to communicate because there's always going to be human error. There's always going to be an asshat. That 1% or 10%, however you want to, they're always going to be there. But now we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be communicating. Uh, this guy is not allowed to be playing, participating. Fantastic. He's banned there for these reasons. And he's banned from ITC events or he's just won't receive any points. Fantastic. We got it. We'll deal with it on our end as well. Now, it's up to individual regions, individual tournaments to go, hey, you know what? You guys might not want, you guys might have banned TJ from, and I'm going to use TJ as an example, from participating in the next couple events. Let's say he can't play in the next couple events and he's got yellow cards or whatever automatically going into it. And the next region over doesn't have to do that. That's totally on them. It's all about what the organization can do. But TOs are communicating now. And with these bigger events, it's becoming really critical that we do talk, especially with stuff like this going on. And as people are chasing that ITC dragon to get the most points possible to be the winner at the end of the season for their faction, for their game overall, painting, whatever it is that they're chasing, uh, it, it's going to be critical that that communication stays going. And that's not good for the bad seeds. So if you are a bad apple, and you know if you are, you've been called out for it. You know if you're a bad apple, whether you're a cheater, you're just a jerk, People are taking notice, and they're not going to stand for it anymore. You might get away with it maybe a couple more times, but your your number's almost up. So to the tournament crowd, keep on holding people accountable. Keep on holding the judges and the players accountable, especially these celebrity players or your local your local top players, your local champions, if you will. The guys that, oh man, he's such a good player. He's so, he always has an awesome painted army, blah, 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 blah. Or, oh my God, I can't believe that guy. He's like the best in in, in Florida and he's here in, in Montana. Oh my God, this is awesome. Oh my God, we should bow down before him. No, you treat him just like every other player, okay? Judges. You need to be treating everybody as equals. Stop bowing down. Stop bending the knee. You're not Disney. You're not Activision. You're not Blizzard. You're not the NBA. Stop bending the knee to these celebrity players and hold them accountable just as much as you would the player next to him. Just because a guy's name is TJ, use that example, he is no more important and he is no more... Um, he, he's no more better. He's no better. He might be a better player, but he's no more important than Todd or Brenda, you know, or Karen, you know, it's it, it, who cares about who, whoever he's playing. They're all the same. You got to treat them with the same dignity, same respect and same unbiased attitude and the players, event organizers, TO that's everybody involved. So don't just give, these players uh, a free pass or just assume well i don't know the under the, the real ruling for this situation so i'm going to err on the side of caution and go with person a nick or tj or <laughs> i hate to keep using tj don't just err on the experienced player take the time to make a sound judgment grab the other judges look it up delay the game for a few minutes it's okay. T uh, events are always going to be delayed. Don't just give somebody a free pass because they're famous. At any rate, I hope everybody will take something away from this, something positive at the end of the day. It's a negative event, but it's got a positive to it because he's not banned for life. TJ can still play. He's just not going to earn ITC points. And for the community... This is good. This is actually good optics. Bad situation that is good. So well done for uh, Fabricator Forge. You guys, from my understand, everything is great there. You got look, the t scenery I saw. Everything looked awesome. You had a great event, except for this one tiny error, which isn't your fault. 
it's the f choices that that individual made and that's why he got punished for it and kudos for that punishment it is fair all up and down the board so i hope everybody learned something uh let me know what you guys think about this put it down in the comments i would love to hear what you guys have to say about it also as we are moving forward with more videos for FMP Wargamers and Havoc Maker Studio, let us know some ideas that you would like to see. You know, some stuff you would like us to cover, not just Games Workshop. You know, is there other games that you want us to try to report more news on? I've got my fingers in a lot of game systems, so I will be reporting on them. But I want to know what more you would like to hear from us. So, with that said... Make sure before you go down and hit the links for Twitch and Reddit to see uh, all the other news and the actual decisions made from the event organizers on punishment and everything. On your way down, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're on FMP Wargamers. Hit that subscribe button if you're over here on Havoc Maker Studio. And if you don't mind, just click open another tab, another window, go over to whichever channel you're not on and hit the subscribe button over there. Help support the channel. The more we get out there, the more stuff we can report on, the more access that we get, and the more involved we get from, or get from both studios, the more subscribers we get for both studios, the more future contests for free prizes is going to happen. I'm sitting on a buttload of stuff for Havoc Maker Studio, and I'm ready to split it with FMP Wargamer fans and see who's going to get what prizes in the future. So make sure you hit the subscribe button on both channels. That way you're entered in all the contests. All right, my name is John. This is Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. Y'all have yourself a wonderful day. I'm going to try one more video up today on Sunday, this the 18th. We'll see if I can make that happen. I'm going to try to have a nice wonderful, beautiful, positive video for you all. Have a great day and I'll talk to you hopefully really soon.